What's up everybody, Grant here and welcome back to the channel. Here we've got the Huawei Mate 9. Today we're going to do an unboxing of this. We'll also compare it up to some other phones including the Mate 8. So if you want to see more videos comparing the Mate 8 to the Mate 9, maybe you've got the Mate 8, trying to figure out if it's worth upgrading to the Mate 9. Like the video, drop a comment below, let me know. So the Huawei Mate 9 was announced I believe in November of last year. Uh, released internationally in December and finally released in the US at the beginning of January, I think right after CES. So as soon as it hit the shelves, I placed an order for one. You can get them through Amazon, Best Buy, and B&H Photo, I believe. And they all are gonna run you $5.99 right now. So let's try to do a quick unboxing here. We'll also do a quick setup and run through. We'll take a snap a few quick photos so you can kind of see some camera performance maybe. And of course we'll do continuing coverage. So there's the Mate 9, Leica branded dual camera. On the bottom you got that Huawei logo. Huawei design on the side. Not much going on the bottom, so. The one thing you gotta say about the Huawei boxes, these really look like gift boxes, not that standard like phone size boxes. These really look really nice, so presentation tends to be really nice on these. Lift it up. And there's the phone. Nice Huawei design there. Pull tab. And lift this up. We've got a couple of boxes here. So looks like we've got, let's lift them up. And we're going to have some documentation, some ejection, a case looks like, based off of those pictures. So here's a case. Let's take a quick look at that. So real thin. It's a smoke tint because I've got the space gray color, or the gray color, um, but it's a very thin case. Uh, it's just basically a clip onto the back, so it's not going to provide any kind of side protection. But, you know, it's a nice throw in. It's not free. They factored this stuff into the cost of the phone, but it's one step more than most manufacturers are giving you, so can't complain about that. This is probably the documentation, but still nicely packaged and a really nice package if that matters to you. Uh, what do we got here? So, mobile phone warranty card. So there's your warranty on that. Mate 9 quick start guide. More late night reading if you really want to get into that. So, move that over. And I believe, oh, there's a SIM ejector. So, SIM ejection tool right there for you. Throw that in a pile if you like collecting those. Uh, here we go. We're going to get some headphones, wall plug, charging cable. So, and again, these boxes are really nice, you can hear that texture, so attention to detail, very nice. You can tell you which way is up there, guys. Um, but here's the wall charger, it's a pretty big brick, so there should be a quick charging brick. And there you go, yep, Huawei quick charge. And we can get other stuff to come out here. Oh, you know what? This is what happens when you don't look at direction, guys. Open it from both sides, so. We've got some headphones, and we've got charging cable. Yeah, that would be all in that box. So real quick, there's a charging cable. Yay, should be Type-C, because it is a Type-C phone. And there it is, Type-C. And we've got some earphones. Not ear pods, but they sure look like them. But hey, you know, at least they give you some headphones earphones and a USB to type C adapter so if you got other micro USB cables maybe you want to throw you want to turn that into a type C adapter there you go so it's nice that they throw that in as well so a lot of nice little lectures there that's pretty much that's in that box move all that over and there's a phone Huawei on the front first impressions it definitely feels nice it's a nice metal build not too heavy, but not too light. Very good feel. Rounded off corners, so we'll show you a comparison to the Mate 8 before. It really looked a lot like the Mate 8. I wasn't sure if I wanted to pick it up, but you got to try it to really understand if you're going to like something, you know? You can't just take a look and make a judgment, so I thought I'd pick it up, share that with you guys. Maybe some of you are trying to decide if you want to upgrade from the Mate 8 too, so I figured I'd try it out, see what, see what I thought, pass that information on to you guys. Hopefully it helps, so... Alright, so quick rundown of the specs. 
we're working here with a high silicon Kirin 960. Yes, Kirin, not Kirin. I'm a Japanese American from Hawaii, so if I said Kirin, I would lose my JA card. So it's a Kirin 960, upgraded from the 950 in the Mate 8. It's an octa-core processor. It's got the Mali G71 GPU. Again, 5.9 inch display. On the back, we've got the dual megapixel Leica branded cameras. One's going to be a 20 megapixel camera, the other a 12 megapixel camera at f2.2 aperture. It does have optical image stabilization, OIS, two time zoom. So we'll see if that two time zoom is anything like the iPhone's two time zoom. Uh, like we said, Leica optic branded, Leica, optic, Leica branded optics, phase detection auto and laser autofocus on it, dual tone LED flash. Uh, we've got the fingerprint scanner there. We've got the SIM card and micro SD card slot combined there on the left side. We've got your volume rocker and power button on the right side. On the bottom, we've got a micro SD, um, sorry, USB type C port with speaker grills. I think only one of these is a down firing speaker. We've got stereo speakers. So another speaker I believe is in the earpiece. At the top, we do have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. And I believe this thing is also running a 4,000 milliamp R battery, just like the Mate 8 as well. So a really big battery combined with that 1080p screen. We should really see some great battery life out of this. The Mate 8 was easily getting six, seven, eight hours of battery life, depending on what you're doing. So I expect a lot of good things out of the battery life out of the Mate 9. And the other thing here that they do give you a pre-installed screen protector. So you can kind of see that there. Uh, we'll probably exchange this out because these tend to be kind of thin and cheap and uh, grease magnets, so I'll probably change this out for a tempered glass screen protector. But it's nice that they throw that in. You don't have to go get one if you don't want one. We'll give it a quick boot up. If we can. There we go. We'll get a quick boot here. So here we got the fingerprint ID set up, so we'll see how fast that is here. We'll just confirm our password. So enroll fingerprint. So we'll see how this fast this is. One, two, three, four, five, six. So eight touches. So eight touches and we're in. So that was a pretty quick fingerprint ID setup there. MUI get started. Okay, so we're all set up here. We're back into the home screen. So the first thing we'll try is a fingerprint scanner. So if we take a look, Huawei typically has some very good and very accurate and fast fingerprints, fingerprint scanners. So let's take a look here. There you go, really quick. Touch, really quick, very fast, very responsive. Seems pretty accurate too. So as I touch, there it goes. Touch, there it goes. So the other thing is, even when I just touch at the bottom of my fingertip, just like that, so I'm not even touching the whole scanner. You can see there, barely, and it, go, and it unlocks it. So um, it doesn't need a lot. It's a very responsive and very accurate fingerprint scanner. Uh, no problems there. Um, next thing around here is the display. So again, only 1080p, quote unquote. My personal opinion on that is I think all flagships in 2017, high-end flagship phones, need to have at least 2K displays. We'll probably see some that come out this year with 4K displays that actually function in 4K mode. Um, so I think flagships minimum need to have that 2K display. People will say, well, you don't need a 2K display because you're not going to be able to see the difference and or it hurts battery life. And I'm like, you know, if I can get the highest spec phone that I can, especially if you want to tout some of these phones with VR, I know VR is not there yet, but in, in any respect, if you're going to be a high-end flagship phone, you're going to want the top-end specs just because you should have them. I mean, if you had a choice between 1080p and 2K, I think you should be able to get that 2K display for your money. Also, the argument against 2K is that it hurts your battery life. With 1080p, you're going to get better battery life. Well, why can't we have both? Right? I, I don't feel like we should be able to settle. I think for high-end phones, we should have the best quality display we can. Um, with the best specs that we can and so if, if a higher resolution is going to hurt battery life I think people should be able to figure out companies should be able to figure out how to give us that better battery life uh, in that higher spec screen that being said 
this 1080p panel does look very good. So two things that I like in the display is, does it get very bright? So what's the brightness like? So crank up brightness, and it definitely gets very bright, very vibrant there. And the other thing is color accuracy and, and vibrancy. The, do the colors pop? Do they look good? And initial impressions, if you look at some of the reds and some of the blues, that's where you kind of can see if it's too washed out, too warm. Blues will tend to get really washed out and look too, too warm on, on a display that's not of good quality, especially an LCD display. Uh, this being an LCD display, blues, reds do seem to pop out pretty well. I think there's a settings uh, that you can play with here to change some of the tonality here. So if I go into settings, display, color temperature, there are some color temperature settings that you can play with here. So if you like it warmer, if you want it cooler, uh, you can always play around with that. I'm just going to leave it on the default. But for display, being a 1080p panel, it does look good. Next, we'll kind of come into the settings here. We'll go into About, and we'll see that we are running EMUI version 5.0 on top of Android 7.0 NuGet. So you pop it in there, there's your NuGet symbol there. We are running NuGet. Uh, other things, so with EMUI 5, they tr tried to kind of pare back their skin a little bit, bring it more in line with stock Android. So things like the notification shade here, so you, you've got your quick toggles and your notifications combined to one screen versus in something like EMUI 4 before they would have it where you'd have your quick settings on one side, notifications on the other. So it's all combined into one shade now. Other things in the stock launcher here, they give you back your app drawer. So if you're missing your app drawer, you have that there. Fast and fluid. And some other things too, like if you went to your recents menu here, the applications are stacked card style vertically versus in EMUI 4 where they'll be a lot more horizontal scrolling so a few minor things to kind of tweak it and pair it back and bring it closer to stock so if you like stock and you like some of those little minor things like that um, they've peeled it, paired that back and they've addressed some of that stuff in EMUI 5 uh, we'll get into more of EMUI 5 later hopefully through the full review as well but that's just some quick highlights there another thing we can do quick, really quickly here is bring back in that case we can go ahead and put the phone in there real quick so as you can see Here's what it looks like with that case that it comes with it. So it's just really to shield the back from scratches. That's about it. That's all you're going to get. All the sides are fully exposed here. So it's the back to prevent it from scratching. It's that smoke color to match the gray color on the Mate 8. You'll get some corner protection. All the corners are reinforced like this. So that's the most you're going to get out of it. It's just a really thin case to prevent scratching. Maybe some corner protection, but all ports are, all sides are open. Basic simple case. I'll have a video on some of the cases that I'm bringing in, some of the aftermarket cases that I typically always bring in with every device. So look for that video as well. Other things, let's take a quick look at the camera maybe. So startup, of course you need your overview like you normally do. So let's go next, next, get through to the camera. And let's clear everything and start the camera up from scratch. Camera starts out pretty quick. Let's see if we can take a quick picture there. Tap to focus, take a pic. So really fast shutter speed there. Take a look at the picture, there it is. Nice detail. Go back, go here and take another picture real quick. Tap to focus, snap again fast. Looks nice, looks sharp, this is a good lighting so, or pretty decent lighting so. We'll see, we'll do an extensive camera test like we normally do. We'll show you some samples, photos, video, good light, bad light, we'll do all of that. Um, so that was the Mate 8, Mate 9. Maybe do a quick snap with the Mate 8 here for comparison. So there's the Mate 8 camera, still fires up pretty quickly. Tap to focus. That shutter speed again is pretty quick. So let's bring up maybe the same photo here. You can kind of see there. They both look pretty good. I mean, let's get the brightness up a little bit on the Mate 8 there. But they both look pretty good. So the real test is going to be an extensive camera test. We'll let you know is the Mate 9 really a big difference in camera over the Mate 8? Because that's one of the big selling features, of course, of the Mate 9 is that like a branded dual camera setup there. So we'll do that camera showdown with the Mate 8 versus Mate 9. We'll show you the samples of photos and videos, see if it's that much better than the Mate 8. So look forward to that video coming up. 
Okay, we can also do some other phone comparisons. So let's bring in maybe the OnePlus 3T. Even though this, the Mate 9 has a 5.9 inch display, it's remarkably compact. So very good screen to bezel ratio here. Um, and so if you compare it to something like a 5.5 inch device like the OnePlus 3T here, of course it's gonna be taller, but if you look at the side profile, they're both very thin. So the Mate 9 is also a very thin device. There's the back, you can kind of see it there from the bottom, you know, from the top even. So that's comparing it with one of the popular devices right now, OnePlus 3T, 5.5 inches, 5.9, so not bad, very compact, this Mate 9. What else have we got? So we've got some other popular phones here. We've got the LG V20, so this is a 5.7 inch device with a secondary, makes it a little bit bigger as well. So lining it up, and the V20 is actually taller with that secondary display. Thinness is about the same. There it is from the bottom. Maybe the V20 is actually a little bit thicker. There it is from the top. From the back with the V20's dual cameras versus the Mate 9 dual camera setup. Mate 9 looks a lot nicer. This is a really, to me, still a really ugly setup on the LG here. So you can do dual cameras that don't make your phone look totally ugly. But there you go. So that's comparing it to the V20. What else have we got here? We've got a true six inch phone here with the ZTE Z Max Pro. So this is another six inch device, even though this is 5.9, they should be about the same size. You can see here, the Z Max Pro is much taller. Also a little wider, which it should be for that 0.1 inches, but it looks like it's a little wider than it needs to be compared to the 5.9, even though the Z Max Pro is a fairly compact six inch phone. Um, there it is from the top, bottom. So Z Max Pro looking definitely chunkier there from the top. And the thing is, the Z Max Pro is not a very chunky phone for a six inch device. So that's how compact this 5.9 inch Mate device is. So that's the Z Max Pro. We've got another six inch device here, the Sony Xperia XA Ultra. This is another six inch device. So it's got also got a very thin profile here, but a very tall one. So if I line it up, yep, there you go. XA Ultra, six inches, way taller than 5.9 inch Mate 9. There's our bottom view. Top view, back, so that's the XA Ultra. We've also got, here we go, iPhone, so iPhone 7 Plus, 5.5 inch device. We all know that it is a huge device for a 5.5 inch device. So as we line it up here, they're pretty much the same height, 5.5 inches in the iPhone 7 Plus, 6.9 inch display in the main 9, and they're pretty much the same height. There it is from the bottom, from the top. And then from the back there. So remarkable what they did with that device there, squeezing in that 5.0 inch device screen into a small as small a body as they can. Here's the Pixel XL. This is also 5.5 inches. So a little bit shorter, looks a little bit chunkier. There you go. Pixel XL. And what else have we got? We've got a Nexus 6P. So Nexus 6P, 5.7 inch display, but it has those dual speakers in the front, firing speakers in the front, which makes it a little bit taller. And it is a little taller than the Mate 9. Side profile, you can see it from the bottom there. See it from the top. Comparing the back with that visor here on the Nexus. Okay, so here we got the Mate 8 compared to the Mate 9. If you already had the Mate 8 and you saw the Mate 9, and you're wondering what kind of design changes they made, may have looked fairly similar. Mate 8 here has got that six inch display compared to the 5.9 on the Mate 9. If you look here, height wise, they're gonna be about the same, pretty close. From the side, the Mate 8 looks a little thicker. From the bottom as well, Type-C versus micro USB there on the Mate 8. Up top. From the back, so you've got that dual camera setup here, single camera setup there. And other changes in the design, they're both rectangular. There's, there's a 2.5D curved glass on the Mate 9. You can kind of, maybe kind of see that on the edges there. A little bit rounded off, but it has a little bit more rounded off corners. So if you look at the corners here, Mate, 
9 versus 8, 8. A little bit more rounded off, you can see it more in person. Um, if you look at the back as well, so they've really rounded off the back for a little bit better in-hand feel. This is slightly round too, but if I hold them both in my hand, yeah, the Mate 9 is going to feel a little bit better. That 0.1 inches makes a slight difference, um, but I think it's a little bit more rounded off on the Mate 9 to give you a little bit better in-hand feel, but they're both rectangular designs. Mate 9 definitely is more rounded off, which is nice, helps with in-hand feel a little bit, but not too dramatically different. So there you go, my unboxing of the Huawei Mate 9. As always, if you have any other questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Like the video if you like the content here, and as always, thanks for watching, guys.